want to define some clinical trial terminology to help patients further understand the process. Let's start with the phases. What occurs during each phase? Yeah, so great question. Phase one is the safety phase. So all we're trying to do is find the right dose of the drug that is actually safe to give in the patients. And we call it, we're looking for the maximum tolerated dose. And once we find that dose, then we use that dose to go to the phase two of the trial. And phase two trials are looking at efficacy. So looking to see whether the trial has um, uh, is giving you any clinical benefit, meaning the cancer shrinking or even disappearing. And then, oh, and then the third phase uh, is uh, phase three, where you're testing the the current drug, the experimental drug, to either standard of care or to placebo to see whether or not you get uh, a benefit, either a progression-free survival benefit or overall survival benefit. And so those are the three phases of clinical trials. Okay. What are the different types of clinical trials? So there are controlled trials. Actually, I should say, I should back up. So there's open label trials where everyone that enrolls in a trial will get the drug, the, the experimental drug. So, uh, and so there is no control arms in these trials. Then there's the control trials where you can either get the drug or you may get a uh, placebo or standard of care drug. And, and in these trials, there are some trials that allow for crossover, meaning that if you're in the placebo or standard of care arm, if your cancer progresses, you, you can actually cross over and get the experimental drug. But I just want to be clear that not all clinical trials have crossover. And if you're in a control trial, I think that's an important question to ask your doctors about that. But the reason why we do the control trials is that we've learned that using historical controls, for example, we're doing a lot of uh, combination studies with chemotherapy, such as docetaxel, which was FDA approved in 2004. So if we're using historical data from almost 20 years ago, it's not the same thing as our patients that are being treated with docetaxel now because the treatment landscape has changed so much and our patients have changed so much. And so for that reason, control trials give us a better sense of how effective this experimental uh, drug is doing as opposed to comparing it to um, an historical perspective. What other types of clinical trials are available? So there are a few other options. So we talked about open label, where everyone's guaranteed to get the drug. We talked about uh, a controlled study where you will either get one drug or the or another. And um, another type is a randomized trial where a computer decides whether or not you're going to actually get one drug versus another. It's not your doctor, because a lot of people think that I'm making that decision and I'm not. It's actually a random computer. And some trials have a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning a 50% chance that you'll get this, the experimental drug versus the control drug. But other, uh, other trials have a one-to-two ratio or a one-to-three ratio. So that's something that, again, you have to ask the, uh, your, your physician of how these trials are being randomized. Well, in a randomized clinical trial, the patient isn't going to know what drug they're being given. That's true. That's Actually, that's, that's not true. That's oh, not it's true. Not. So it's in the double, so, that, so you bring up a great question. So there is a double blind randomized uh, clinical trial where not only the patient doesn't know, but even the physicians and the nurses, no one um, except for the pharmaceutical company that's running the trial actually knows uh, who's, uh, who's actually um, getting which drug. And it's only towards the end of the trial that we unblind 
And then we share that information. Well, the pharmaceutical company first shares it with the medical team who then shares it with the patient. Oh, I see. Okay. Are there other common clinical trial terms that you think patients should know about and understand? I think to, for now, those are, there are definitely the important. Other, but I think to me, those are the most important. And I yeah. think that sometimes too much information can bog us down. Yeah. Well, speaking of information, there is a lot out there, um, some of which may not be very reliable. And that could lead many patients to having misconceptions about clinical trials. Let's walk through a few common concerns we've heard from our community about trials. One frequent question is, will I receive a placebo instead of a real treatment? And first, I'd like you to define placebo. And should this be a concern for patients? Right. So placebo is a drug that looks similar to the, the experimental drugs. For example, if it's if the experimental drug is a blue pill, then the placebo will be a, a blue pill, but it will be a pill that should have no, bio, no known biological activity. If the experimental drug is given in intravenously and you get it in a liquid bag, then the placebo will also come in a liquid bag. So it'll look the same. And that's why both the, uh, the medical team as well as the patients or their families will not know which drug the patients have received, meaning the experimental drug or the placebo. And, but the placebos are meant to not have any biological activity. Okay, so it shouldn't be a concern to patients then. It, well, the concern that most of my patients share with me when they hear about placebo-controlled trials is, well, if I'm not going to get the experimental drug, why should I do this? I mean, what benefit does it have for me? And so I tell them that one of the benefits is that we are watching you very carefully. Because even if you're not, because we don't know sometimes which drug you're getting, but in, in con some controlled trials, like a randomized control trial, we will know because I'm not blinded. If you're in the arm that's only getting chemotherapy, well, you know you're not getting an oral pill. So it's very clear to the patient what, what they're getting. But, um, but if they're getting an oral pill that's a placebo, we're watching them very carefully. We're watching the patients very carefully in these uh, placebo-controlled trials. And, and they're coming in often so that we're not going to miss any um, devastating things happening from the cancer. In fact, we'll pick it up earlier than if they were just getting a standard of care outside of a trial. And for that reason, I tell my patients, don't be worried. And I always make sure that I have a backup plan. So the backup plan is either they're going to cross over, meaning the trial allows for them to cross over to get the experimental drug, or I have another trial that I know that they will qualify for. Or the third alternative is that I actually have a standard of care drug that I'm ready to give them the second I have it so that they don't have to have those concerns. Mm -hmm.